Hi guys, Steph Falcon here again. Um, I've just recently done a vlog, which you can find on my blog uh, playlist. It was the um, Advent vlog. <coughs> but today I'm doing a tag. Um, you don't usually see people doing tags by themselves. Well, I've, I've mostly seen people do tags with like partners or friends or boyfriends, girlfriends, that kind of thing. But I thought I'd do a tag by myself so people get to know a little bit about me and I might be able to tag some people in it. So this is the throwback tag. So here's some really good um, <coughs> questions. I've read through them before, like just sort of flicking on the internet. Um, if you want to do the tag yourself, you can have a look on the YouTube tag, tag video question YouTube forum. So if you type in YouTube tag videos and stuff, you can find the forum on the Google search or whatever search engine you use. <coughs> okay, so let's start. Okay, question number one. What year were you born in? I was born in the year 1993, which was the third year of the 1990s. Um, I really don't know much, what much happened in my year, but I was told that there was like a lot of gun crime in America. And I think it was the start of like grunge, the music uh, genre grunge, like Nirvana and all of those other kind of, uh, <coughs> kind of like um, bands and that kind of thing. But yeah, but that that was the year I was born. Actually, the the day I was born was the seventeenth of July. So yes, that shows my age. I am twenty. So yeah. Anyway, do you have any pictures of yourself from when you were younger? If you do, show them. I do actually. I've got some on a little display that is on my wall that um pretty much my mum had made for me for, for my 18th birthday. So she made one for my sister. And I think so. So <coughs> so here we go. This is the first one. There we go. And that is me and the little one in the the arms. And that. A uh, lady there uh, was my grandma, my grandma, or you know, it was my grandma, rest her soul. Um, so yeah, I don't, she was probably one of the first people to hold me, but actually, the first ever person to hold me was my dad because I was born by emergency cesarean. So, unfortunately, my mum couldn't be the first one to hold me, and also, my dad missed out on the birth as well. Um, but he got he got to have a very long time with me before my mum actually came out because back then he didn't really get given the option of a epidural. You you were just put under. So, you know, I don't know if they had the technology of having epidurals during the cesarean back in the nineties, but pretty much my mum was put under. And if you're put under for a cesarean you can't your partner can't see you with while it's happening. Um, another photo I've got here <coughs> that was printed off the computer. Hopefully, if this person doesn't mind me showing their picture, uh, this one, wow, there we go, that's me in the pink top, and that's my friend Sophie in the purple top, uh, pretty much the other same top. Uh, we dressed like that to be um, similar because I think we were taking part in an assembly, we'd done a song together, and um, I think this. Uh, particular photo was taken at our teacher's retirement party. Um, so I think there, well, in that photo I was a new boy. So I think in this one I was probably about nine years old, something like that. About nine years old. Um, so yeah, but we're we're still very much just friends and stuff. And even though we only get to see each other like a couple of months or so because we've got very separate lives. But, you know, we're still friends. We're still very good friends. Now, the last photo I've got here <coughs> is us on, fam on a family holiday. And as you can see from the face, and my face, it's very different. Uh, also, in the picture, I hope that they don't mind me shouting. Um, the, the man is my dad there, and the person sticking out from the side of my head, that happens to be my sister. Now, she, if I was... Ten in that she must have been about twelve, and my dad very big. Anyway, <laughs> you know that kind of thing. I think we were on holiday, and I think with that we were on holiday in Bognor Weekend. 
um, when we went to go to Butler's, we went to Butler's the second time round, but it was the first time we took Dad. So the first time we went round, we um, we took Grandma, and we've been to all three together. So three Butlins, I've been to all three of them. The best one is Bob Louise and Tony Stark. The worst one I went to was mine. We had this squawky seagull. And they had signs saying, do not feed the seagulls. But what do people do? Sleep on the fucking seagull. And, oh, God. And the fact that you hear them at 4 in the morning. <coughs> and also the swimming pool there again, you're up. But I don't know if it's changed. So I'm terribly sorry, but there's a man who's hanging my ear off. But when I went there, it didn't seem to be there. Getting there's just fine. But um, I think the best one we went to was Bob and Regis. And also the fact when we went to Bob and Regis, um, our great aunt and uncle lived down here. Um, she was down at Southbourne, so it was only about maybe miles away from where we were staying, so we actually got a chance to go visit them before we went to Butlins. And often, um, the last time we went to my, uh, the Isle of Wight, we actually got a chance to go visit them, visit them there, because they were only about a few hours away as well, so, yay! Anyway, <coughs> okay, third question. I've got hair on my iPad. What TV shows did you grow up watching? Oh, many! Um, well, lots of things I grew up watching with. Well, my generation was, for like, l very little kids. Kingu, Noddy, um, Tweenies. That was probably, Tweenies was when I was getting towards six years old. Um, Teletubbies, um, uh, Old Bear, um, Okie Doke, um, not, uh, right, I, meant, I think I meant um, but Noddy the Mysterious Skyman, Bob the Builder, Pokemon Street, my collection down there, Pokemon Pack, um, oh jeez, uh, a revival of the Wombles, uh, that kind of thing. I mean, we've got loads, but like for older kids, there, there was Pound Chicken, Courage to the Job, Courage to Pound the Job, Dexter's Laboratory, um, Johnny Bravo, uh, Ed, Ed and Eddie, loads of, loads of these programs that you can, if you can, you can, sh you can view them now, <coughs> but only really late at night. But I remember watching stuff from like other generations, I remember watching stuff like, um, Mr. Ben, uh, Back to Either the Engine, that kind of thing. Um, I remember watching... Top Cat, Darcy and Muttley, Tom and Jerry, Flintstones, um, Hong Kong Fully, that kind of thing. They could all be viewed um, late at night on Boomerang and the other channels. So that kind of thing. And Cow Chicken and stuff, that can be viewed at about 10 o'clock at night on Cartoon Network. So that's if you're in the UK. Um, Cartoon Network for like, um, <coughs> for like, um, Courage Cow as well, Cow Chicken, Joey Bravo, about 10 o'clock. And then for like uh, Boomerang, I think is I'm not quite sure if Boomerang's shown in America. I think it is, but like in the UK, it's about early hours in the morning. It's about, it's about um, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. So if you want to get some sleep, but if you want to get your beauty sleep, best thing to do is get one of those um, uh, one of those um, plus satellite boxes or whatever where you can record stuff on your phone. Um, it's brilliant. <coughs> but that's what I kind of grew up with. So I grew up with some stuff of my generation, but I also grew up with stuff that like my parents did. Like Ivy the Engine and Badger, that was like my mum and dad's thing. And the Cracker Box as well. I'll tell you what, one of my tutors uh, last year what found out that I knew about the Clangers. And the best quote I got from him was, Holy shit, how very retro of you. Love it. <laughs> so may I say, Tom, you got a shout out, my friend. Thumbs up to you, hater. Anyway, uh, the next question <coughs> show us a video show a video of yourself of when you were younger um i haven't got a video of me when i was younger well i don't know where the video i think there was a video of stuff from when me and liz were young but i don't know if we still got it or was it around or was like an actual thing also also i would have to edit it around with this kind of thing um but i've got this one here i haven't got that so but we have got some but it'd be anything anyway let's move on uh 
what were your favourite toys to play with? Now, I grew up, I grew up in the generation where we actually had physical toys. Um, I'm sure the kids have toys now, but I think maybe some of them have like activations and tags and stuff. But we, oh, I remember loads of toys growing up with. Um, I remember the Furby, the first generation of Furbies where they didn't have digital eyes. They actually had proper eyes. Ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah. And you couldn't carry them by their ears, otherwise they would break or it would hurt them. I was told by my parents, never carry them by their ears. And actually I thought, don't carry them by their ears, because that would hurt them. But I think I guess it would break them. But, I think, but my parents just remember them not, never shut up. I think sometimes in the middle of the night they go, And you're just like, what the hell was that? Oh, bloody Furby. I think sometimes my parents must have looked at us playing with those Furbies. And thought, I'll wait till they're at school and I'll chuck it out the window and say it was a happy I'm sure that must have been it. I'm sure they must have wanted to just destroy those Furbies. But the ones, the one, when we had them, I had one that was black and white, like Debbie said, and then uh, my sister had one that was like brown and black stripes, like a Debra, but just brown. <coughs> Is like, it's like these babies nowadays are like all different colors. They're like colors and their eyes do weird stuff are like digital. But if anybody's seen the articles now, that is hilarious one with the um the alien and the furby is like, would you like a wagon wheel? And when the furby's been put in the box, what are you doing to Charlotte? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So go and type it up. Like go and find it on YouTube. See, you'll be falling over all over the place. That's if you're not in the UK at the moment seeing it on the telly. I mean, it is hilarious. <coughs> I think what other toys we used to... I remember Weeble. Those people were like, oh, wait, Weebles were in the 60s and stuff. Weebles. Yeah, we had, we had a generation of Weebles. I don't know if it was passed out. But I remember having it, like, at play toys. And the best thing of all was when you used to put it on top of the stairs and push it. So it made it go down the stairs. And the sound, I just still remember to this day. <laughs> Oh, brilliant! Man. I mean, if anybody can get me a like a 1990s set, like Weeble set, I just do that all day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I remember having toys like um toys like uh, like Teddy Tommy toys. I remember having a, kind of having the dolls and that kind of thing. Um, we had like a whole collection of like Barbie dolls and soft toys and that kind of thing. So lots of things we used to play with. I can't think of what other ones we used to play with. I mean, we used to play with these toys that um, my granny used to give us. But they're very sacred memories for me. So if anybody can get me one, I'll give it to them. I mean, she's just a generous old lady. Um, but that kind of thing. But I, I've had loads of toys over the years. Um, and, um, you know, this is all being great. Oh, I remember playing with Lego and Duke Nukem back in the day. So lots of things. I mean, probably the list goes on. Excuse me. Um, what What's the most embarrassing thing you can remember doing? I think I do remember this. This is probably when I was about... I was probably about 10 years old, 11 years old, something like that. <coughs> and I don't know if many people remember a song from the, uh, by the Dutch called I Believe in a Single Love. I believe in a single love. Just listen to the roof of my heart. And that kind of thing. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I had a broom in my hand. I had a broom in my hand. I wanted to go and eat it in the living room. I had the doll stuck in my head. So anyway, I got to the, the main bit of the program and I'm like, I'm leaving the thing on! Ah! And I was shaking it up and down. My dad was telling me. And it exploded. It went up the curtain, into Dad's slipper, on Mum's washing pile, on the cat. I'm poppy, poor thing, and, and my dad's like, that, that, that. I'm like, what, what, what? And then it's the explosion. My mum came in, my sister came in, and I remember my sister laughing, but apparently she was laughing so hard, she was on the floor, almost passed out. That's how much she was laughing at me. So, like, so whenever we had the song in the car, we would go, I believe in a big old laugh. Ooh. And you know, that kind of thing. It was like, just shout it. Instead of going, Hur! or, it's bad, we go, Hrug! You know, so, yeah, I always, or, but, always, we sometimes put it in our household as a reference, is, um, I believe in a thing called Hrug. 
I don't think I'm ever gonna rip that down. I'm sure when me and Liz are gonna be like retirement retirement homes, we're just gonna be like sat there like, Oh, I remember how you kissed your tenor pack. Oh yeah, Chef? I believe in people proof. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you know. Read something you wrote when you were in kindergarten. I think it's supposed to be Mary. Well, we didn't have kindergarten. So <coughs> all nasty, but I don't remember writing it. But actually, I'll tell you one thing. I remember reading that I wrote ages ago. Um, I found it in one of my drawers, and it was one of the math books for doing sequences. And it was a page on how to put things in sequence. And it showed how shit my joined up writing was. I couldn't even read the title. And I could mention the secret I got us into joined up handwriting, but you know. Uh, but can I just say, special names for year nine, why? Because the teacher I had before the teacher that did joined up handwriting. We could do whatever writing we wanted and they would put it down. Unjoined, that was fine. Joined up writing? Well, if you, well, if you want to do that then, yeah, fine. So this is the teacher came up, right? Joined up handwriting, so you all want to do it. And I used to make mistakes, so even one part, I joined up all the words and one of the teachers was just like, no, no, we don't do it like that. You know. Um, you know, you weren't, it wasn't done like, it wasn't like, um, it's not quite correct, but, you know, you know, give it another go. What was that? Is that no, no, that's not how you do it. And that kind of thing. And I wrote and I remember reading this and I thought, what the fuck did they do to my handwriting? But I did it, but once I stopped having that teacher, I just rebelled and I just thought, right, back to enjoying handwriting. And then one day, I think I was in like year year ten, I found myself some joint did unjoined and then I went straight into joined up handwriting. I do it to this day. But in a sense I do it to the style that I wanted to do it, not how I was taught. So yeah. So I could name and shame, but I ain't going to because I've got dignity and I've got respect for people. <coughs> Three songs you love to listen as a child to as a child. Um, it's very hard to pinpoint three songs, but I remember the stuff I used to listen to as a kid. I mean, I remember the Spice Girls, Hair Club Seven. Um, I remember Step, the Tweenies, they had pretty cool songs like, uh, Number One, Do The Lollipop, and that kind of thing. I mean, listening to those songs, they were pretty cool. So, um, you know, but I remember when Tiny Pop and Pop was starting out, when they were actually proper music video uh, channels, and now they just do, like, programs. I guess in a way, sort of like MTV. Um, <coughs> <coughs> I remember Tiny Pop, they had some really cool songs that were done by like children's television programs and stuff like that. But I remember listening to those stuff growing up. I mean, my taste kind of like was a bit of everything. I mean, when I was about 16, I really got into the Beatles. But in a sense, I really enjoy um, the music that I used to listen to when I was younger. Like F Club 7. So pretty much like F Club 7, Step, Spice Girls, Tweenies, the list goes on. <coughs> What was one funny, funny thing you dressed up as for Halloween when you were young? <coughs> I wouldn't say this is funny, but but the first ever proper Halloween that I had, um, there was Halloween, and then I had a Halloween disco at school. And for both of those days, I was a devil. So I had a cape, I had the horns, red clothing, I had the tail, the uh, the fork thing, and everything. It was pretty cool. So yeah, that was back then when you didn't think about being sexy costumes, you know, you know, in a sense, so, yeah, tell a funny story of something you remember happening when you were young, um, <coughs> I can't remember, um, one when I was particularly young, but I think, in a sense, when I was about, um, I think I must have been about 15, or, not exactly what I found funny, but I, I made funny. Uh, my drama teacher, Mr. Polly, Andrew Polly, brilliant guy, uh, <coughs> he was doing an assembly. And anyway, he was talking about May Day, and like May Day baking. And anyway, he, talk, he came onto the stage with some bells on one hand, he was on a hobby horse, with a green thing around him and a green hat. Bad thing about, you know, a bit like a 
Uh, so he turned around and said, now, can anybody explain to me why I'm called Green Clothing? I'm on a hobby horse and I've got bells and I'm dancing about. So I stuck my hand up and I said, are you celebrating International Forget Your Dignity Day? All the teachers erupted in laughter. And he turned around and said, eh, no, Steph, I celebrate that every day. So it was just the fact that I got the timing so perfect. It's just, like, brilliant. And, the, and then, like, some of my teachers just were like, oh, but, you know, you've had your day. You know? <laughs> so that's really, so that's one memory I sort of do remember. And I look back on it now and I can just see him doing it and I can just hear the teachers laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, are there special things you kept from when you were a child? Yes, there is. I can show you the well, I can show you the one that's in my bedroom. Um, we have got something that isn't in my bedroom. I think it's in my mum and dad's bedroom. And it was a it's a teddy bear that my auntie Diane used to have called Old Ted. And he was pretty old. <coughs> but there is one. But I had my room. Now this is Piggy. Now this is Piggy. She's, she's my ragdoll. Um, now this ragdoll is very special. Okay. This is one of the last ragdolls that my granny made before she became... I think it was a couple of years before she died that she made it. But she made her and we wanted one sort of the same. But ours was black haired and Lizzie had one with blue eyes and red lips. I, I have one with green eyes and purple lips. But this is Piggy, so I'll give you a closer look. She's in her... I think she's got some other clothing, but I think they're all in the lot. But anyway, she's in her dungarees. She's uh, got socks on. No shoes. She's got hair now. Hair is all woolen. And she's got a baking fringe. And her face is beautiful too. So. I mean, one of the eyes is a bit lopsided, but hey. Don't we all have features that are, well not all perfect, but, but she is very special to me. <coughs> but she is starting to sort of wear out it. I think one of her arms was sort of all stitched and stuff, which made it a bit strong. But in a kind of sense, she is very special. I mean, I would very rarely, I wouldn't lend her to anyone as a prop unless they were very, very careful with it. And I mean, if it got broken, cared for. I would just be absolutely annoyed because um, the fact is, I mean, if she got destroyed in a fire, she wouldn't be able to be in the classroom. In a sense, and she's very precious to me because she's got the very, um, she was the very last thing I had of my granny that uh, me and my sister inherited. Um, because my cousin Laura inherited a uh, rag lad who was Piggy's older sister, <coughs> who got Piggy. Uh, in a sense, so. Pretty much, I'm hoping to be able to look after this, this one, and when I move out, she'll be coming with me. Um, and pretty much, hopefully, my kids will inherit her. But I will definitely say to them that they would have to be very careful when they played with her, you know, because you know, this is what their great granny made them, and it's the last thing that their mum has of uh, their great granny. So, in a sense, she is very special to me, and sometimes I, I do cuddle. In a sense, so what are you say next? What are you say then? We're gonna move on to the next question. Okay, you can say. Okay. <clears throat> what was something? Uh, what was something weird you used to do as a child? Um, very hard to kind of pinpoint something because I didn't have a I didn't have a normal childhood. But I'm sure everyone would say, oh, everybody has a normal childhood. I'm not normal one. Well, the fact is, I have got autism, a high functioning autism. But when I was a kid, I was diagnosed with severe autism called the Rag Hatter when I was about three and a half. So I used to, uh, apparently, I used to do a lot of crazy stuff as a kid. I uh, Weird stuff. Like, there was one thing I used to do. I used to lie under the conveyor belt and watch the conveyor belt go round to lie under the cell that was there. <coughs> Um, I used to do this thing where I would line up all the bread, loads of bread, and then squish them down. Um, I can't remember 
any other weird things that I do to me. I mean, in a sense, my mum said to me that I can remember my own foot, saying it was dark and weird. But also she said that I could actually recall my life, I could actually recall my life within the womb, and she said that I said that it was dark and noisy, but in fact that it was dark and noisy, and noisy from the heartbeat. But I don't remember, but to this day, I don't remember anything about my birth or about being in the womb. But I don't remember, but I don't think I told them straight up. I'm sure I told them in a, 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 unique, a unique way of my own, in a sense. But I think if anybody wants to ask me now, do you remember your own birth? I would just say no. But, in a sense, but I remember one thing that I did remember. Uh, this sort of memory. I don't remember it at all, but my sister remembers it vividly. My mum doesn't remember it. My auntie doesn't remember it. Um, if granny, if my if my grandma was still alive, she probably won't remember it either. But in a sense, my sister does <laughs> quite vividly. <coughs> and uh, we were at Carlton anyway. We were at Carlton to dinner. This is the memory I have. And I said to my mum, "Can I uh, can I have a penguin?" And unfortunately, my my mum said, "Unfortunately, no, you can't." I said, can I be a penguin? And my sister just erupted in laughter when she told me about it. And she said it was the most funniest thing she had ever heard me say. And I have no recollection of this whatsoever. But we had a massive giggling session over it. I think we watched something on the telly about penguins and then it sort of struck to her. It kind of came back like, oh, well, I don't know about this. <laughs> you know, but I don't remember that whatsoever. So maybe what I remember... Uh, everybody else doesn't remember because I there's actually something I remember. <coughs> I remember pre certain pre two presents that I got my sister. I got Fun and Fancy Free, which is the Disney package um, movie and video on VHS. And the one present that everybody else doesn't remember, but that I remember, I remember, was the Buzz Lightyear pajamas. Now because this is uh, going through a phase where I was a tomboy. And actually, were thought I was a boy and not a girl. And in fact, my aunt said to me like this about about it over dinner, and I'm like, I don't remember it at all. It's embarrassing. But when I thought about it, I thought, actually, I do. I remember people saying you're a girl. So I was like, no, I'm a boy. You know that kind of thing. You know, but it kind of kind of weird when you think well, I don't remember it, and then you think, oh shit, I do. So, but the fact is, like these kind of buzz like your pajamas, it's almost like a hypothetical kind of conspiracy in my house because nobody remembers getting me the pyjamas and I said that oh it might be an Auntie Joy but I think but I think even she doesn't really remember me getting the pyjamas or my parents have no recollection of it or I can't remember if my sister does but I'm sure she does as well no one has this recollection about the bus like your pyjamas only me and I remember it the, the pyjamas often were black the top was black the sleeves were green and I had both that year on the front Nobody else remembers it, only me. It's amazing what the memory banks will remember, or your mind is. Oh, but the fact is, I can remember stuff in very vivid, you know, in a very vivid memory, so to say. I can actually, like some things, some people will say, Oh, do you remember this day where we were uh, punched an elephant or something? I'm not suggesting you punch an elephant, but some of that, oh yeah. But if you ask me that, I'll, I'll be able to tell you what day it was, what time we did it. What you were wearing, what I was wearing, that kind of thing, the temperature it was outside, the weather, that kind of thing. I don't, yeah, I can remember some very vivid details. And yeah, if you do give me something like a memory bank, if you remember something in five seconds, I, won't do, I can't do it. <laughs> that means something I did on my fifth birthday, yeah, sure. I'll give it to you in great detail. Memorize something in five seconds and then repeat it back. Thank you. <coughs> now you're like, oh, funny thing, you sit down. Um, okay, what's the scariest thing you remember that happened to you when you were younger? There's a really good story that goes with this question, I'll just put you down for a second, please. <coughs> now, this, um, happened, uh, this was back when I was severely autistic and I had my screen fixed and I was, and I think I had night terrors or something like that, so, in a sense, if, if I did have night terrors, and I suffered from them, it probably does make sense 
because and it's because night terrors. It's like when it's when someone's having a bad night, a bad dream, but it looks uh, the actual sleep, but it looks like they're awake. The eyes are wide open, but they're actually asleep, and they're screaming and whatever. And all the dream about is what's happening in your head. <coughs> now thinking about I now when this happens, the sort of nightmare night terror while I was awake. So it must be a night terror. I was about probably about five or six years old. Actually, I must have been about four or five years old. And there was this jellyfish. It wasn't in this room, it was actually the other house we used to live at. <coughs> there was like this woolly black jellyfish. Like a nippy thing. So I said it was a spider. Anyway, I remember it wiggling up to me and something else. And then I remember going to sleep, and it must have been a another dream. When I woke up, then I saw this thing. It was just quite heavy. Now, I don't know if the video footage was made, or if it was night terrors. If any experts can help me, please do. I would love to have an explanation. <laughs> now, in a sense, uh, what happened next was I went to my mum and dad's room, and I could say. There's a spider in my room. So they let me into the room, and I remember my dad was on this room, my mum was on a different room, and there was two very bright corners, and they were sort of lying on the floor. I thought, what the hell? I'm not knowing what's going to happen. And then I saw this tentacle come over, come over towards me. I went to touch it, I screamed, stopped crying, the lights went on, I had a bit of dad on the floor. Never saw it again. And then the, the funny thing of all, <coughs> I can't remember what uh, what happened after that. Pretty much that what happened. Um, I don't have any recollection of the next day or anything like that. It was just you know, that what happened. You know, I don't remember it. It's very small because I can't remember anything that happened pre like after before the age of five. After the age of five, I can, you know, stuff like that. I can't remember that much. <coughs> Actually, pretty much, I think something like after age six becomes a very vivid memory. And everything pre six or even pre five years old, it's like not very vivid anymore. Right. Okay, the last. Now, did I remember? Ah! I think I just missed that question for, but I'll quickly do this. What did you want to be when you grow up? Uh, what What did you want to be when you grow up? And do you still want to be that? <coughs> now, I went for a lot of things like, as a kid, but I remember the first thing I said I wanted to be when I grew up, and I don't know why I said this, there's no recollection or anything to connect to this thing, but I said the first thing I wanted to be when I grew up was a vet. That was the first thing, like, it's like, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up then? I said, I want to be a vet. Um, I, it, but over the years it's changed. I mean, at one point I wanted to be a fireman. At one point I wanted to be a cashier at McDonald's. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> it's very odd. Um, I wanted to be a swimming instructor at one point. I wanted to be... Well, actually, what I, wa I had two things. I had my wish, and then I had what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, when I was eleven, I can't remember what the wish, uh, what the like, <coughs> what the career choice was, but my wish was to be a voice actor. I gave up on the dream of wanting to be a pop star. That was when I was about eight, so I gave up. But they, both me and my sister, uh, me, me and my best friend, were like, "Oh, I want to be a pop star. I want to be a pop star. I want to be a pop star." And all that kind of stuff. Like that. Um, you know. So. Um, you know, I mean it's changed over the years, I can't really, oh I wanted to be healthcare, a healthcare assistant when I left school, when I was about 10. Um, I can't remember what else I wanted to be, I can't remember what else I wanted to be. I can't remember. Uh, but in a sense, you know, um, I've always wanted, but one of the things I've always wanted to be was marriage, and I've always wanted to be a mum, and I still want to be. Um, but the fact is nowadays, 
um, nowadays, I, I, one of the dreams was to be an actor. But that, I had a recollection a couple of years ago, I thought, why not have it as a career? I mean, certain people do. Certain people are actors, and I'm sure it's a career. So I thought, yeah, I want to be an actor. But in a sense, it's sort of changed in the last few months. I, I'm not quite sure. I would still love to be an actor. I mean, if I can get the act, if I can get the job and like the acting work, that'd be great. But in a sense, I sort of changed. Like at one point, I wanted to do something like performing arts administration. So study at university. Don't want to do that. Don't want to go to university. So, but I might. But I'm. I would love to do something like first class. Just you know, simple. Just a simple task of like you know. Selling tickets, selling food, um, sharing tickets, showing people to the street, you know, sort of parties for people, uh, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, and you know, just show people to the street. Maybe, maybe cleaning. Well, you know, maybe do like a bit of cleaning where you clean out um, theatre seats and that kind of thing, where it's all ready for the next showing that kind of thing you know. I mean I, I am a part time cleaner at the moment I really do enjoy it so you know I may even delve into being like a full time cleaner or being like a cleaner for like um, for like a theatre centre like the Mercury Theatre or the exhibits in council that kind of thing you know like being a cleaner like, you know cleaning the stage cleaning out like the foyer reception um, the purple room theatre seats, that kind of thing, so you know, there's those possibilities out there, I mean, you know, hopefully if I can find something, that'd be fantastic. Okay, back down to the very, very last question, I think I said this one. <coughs> how is the world now different from how it was when you were a child? Now this is a very good question, and I'd say it's immensely different. I mean, when I was a child, I, I didn't quite understand why I was different from other people, other children. I, I mean, even when I was severely autistic, I knew I was different from other children, from other children that I saw in the street or who lived near me, that kind of thing. I knew I, I knew I was different. I knew I was very different. Especially, I knew I was different to my sister. I didn't behave the way that my sister did. I didn't communicate the way that my sister communicated. I didn't socialise with people the way that my sister did. You know, well, my sister's pretty bright anyway. I mean, you know, by the time she was about four, there was no temper tantrum because she was able to clearly communicate whatever she wanted, you know. Um, <coughs> and there's certain things that I haven't been able to achieve until a later date, apart from that. I mean, it wasn't until I was about 30 where I was able to work my own business. I mean, times are very different now, you know. <coughs> I must have been about 11, 12 years old, something like that, before I was able to get over a nightmare without going into my mum and dad's bed, that kind of thing, you know. Um, in a sense, it's very different. I'm able to achieve things more in a more, con more contained time frame. But also, the fact is, I'm able to do a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to do as a kid, or never thought I was going to be able to. Like the fact is, I'm able to communicate with people normally. Um, you know, I've I've been able to do certain things that would be very scary to some people. That kind of thing. I've been out to the pub late at night to do karaoke, and um, one of the the goals that I want to try in life is going to a nightclub with maybe with some friends to help me to achieve that and have a family that kind of thing. I almost almost did, but um. But something uh, didn't go quite to plan. <coughs> I mean, I was going to like go with my friend for the ages and stuff like that, but and my mum was busy somewhere, so if it, it all got too much, I just had to phone her and say, "Hey, you know, but she was going to be in America, and I didn't want to bother my dad because you know we're coming all the way out to Chelsea to get her for her for her birthday." Anyway, <coughs> but you know, but in a sense, I'm able to like my life is very different. There is times where I do sort of wish, oh, I wish I could be a kid, I wish I could just enjoy the innocence of it, you know, not have all the worries and stress that I do now. But there are times where I enjoy being a kid. I look at it and think, well, what can I do now that I wasn't able to do? What can I enjoy now? Like, 
driving. I love driving. Like, half around the times they get stressful and everything. Things go weird and it sucks. But apart from that, if it all goes well, I love it. It's brilliant. I, I, the fact is, I love looking at my full license and knowing I'm, it makes me a grown up. It really makes me feel grown up when I see it. And every time I see that, I think, I earned that. I worked really hard for like two and a bit years. And I managed to get it. And there's certain things I can enjoy now as an adult. Like when I was a kid, the most I used to enjoy was a good black carrot squash. Nowadays, I just most sometimes I really enjoy a good rose tea. And you know, that's it. And there's a lot of things now I can do that I wasn't able to do when I was younger. Like, I've done a lot of things fake from now. I mean, I've got fun at the same time. I mean, I've been able to go and see a, record, a, a show recording which involves a very noisy audience, that kind of thing, I would have been, I would have um, probably got there, got in there, heard the audience, and just decided to run out, or just would have been like, oh my god, I don't want to see this, I don't like this, that kind of thing, but I stuck it out, and it was brilliant, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, that kind of thing, I've been on a plane for the first time, when I was younger, I just thought, no, too scared, but once I did it, I mean, first time I took off, that was so exciting. Instead of being like, oh, tell me when it's over, I was literally looking out the window like, oh my god, we're taking off, we're taking off. I don't like it when the plane, the one thing I don't like is when the plane tilts itself, like if it tilts itself a little bit, that's fine. But if it tilts too much, then you can start to see the thing like, yeah, like that. But in a sense, like when we were going home, I was like, Ehh. like that, we're taking off, it was great. I was like my mum. Because actually she's really, she's like, bring it on! You know, like really excited to take off and that kind of thing. <coughs> but, there's a lot of things I can do now that I was able to do as a kid. Like, enjoy really growing up. Just, like, um, well, the fact that I, I'm able to enjoy a, a full grown up relationship. Like, when I was young, I used to have boyfriends. So it was like, Charlie's sweetheart and that kind of thing. <coughs> You know, holding hands in a school playground, that kind of thing. But now I can enjoy a, a grown up relationship with my boyfriend. And he and me were actually both each other's first steps in the park. And it's just amazing to just look back on your life. And the best thing of all is, when I reach, well, what actually, this happened when I was about 19, I think. I got to that stage where I can actually say the phrase, the good old days, and I can, you know, I can indulge in nostalgia and that kind of thing. And, and it shows when you're old, or when you've got to that age, where you listen to a song and you think, oh my god, I remember when that first came out, and you're listening to it on like the radio, or like first listening to it on the radio, and first going to disco to hear it. Like the other day, uh, how we just said, Miss Club, I heard Fast Food Rockers, and then it sort of hit and it hit me that I was 10 when that song came out. When that song came out for the first time, I was about 10 years old. I'm now 20. I can't believe that was 13 years back. I can't believe that was 10 years ago. You just sort of think, oh, oh my god, I do. And that kind of thing. But in a sense, I've got a lot more to enjoy when I grow up. I mean, the fact that I have my voice to break. And then people are like, wait, where is voice to break? Well, they do, in a sense, they break at the age of, like, 23, you know, at the age of 23, your voice starts to break, so that you sound less like a, a girl, and you sound more like a woman, because if you listen to certain teenage girls, you know, or young girls, and you listen to grown-up women, there's definitely a difference in voice, and, but I think in some way, I think women's voices gradually break, and, and gradually get more deep and grown up. Like I said, my voice is a lot more sort of, in a sense, when I do speak lower down, it's a lot more lower down than when I was a kid. I mean, I started that habit at the age of 12. I used to speak quite low down, so that if I ever heard myself recorded, it wouldn't sound very bad. So, like, you're hearing it very high and squeaky like this. You just think, kill me. People have to listen to that. Oh, my God. I apologise in the box. Well, I hate to hear the sound of my voice recorded. I know you watch these videos back when I've recorded them. It's just the pain of it. It's just like, 
oh my god. In a sense, but, you know. And we've come to the end of our throwback tag. Um, the people I'm going to tag in this, if they want to do it by themselves or do it with a friend, they can. I am tagging, <coughs> in this video, Waterloo5971, um, Phil Buff 06, uh, these are like friends of friends and a friend of mine, uh, people that aren't personally friends but I do subscribe to and watch the videos, uh, Kaylin and Lucy, and Rose and Rosie. I want to see what you guys what you guys come up with. Um, if you want to put, and if you want to put like a, if anybody else watching this wants to put like a, a comment to one of the questions, um, they can. Like say like, like for instance, uh, what TV show did you grow up with? Like grow up watching that kind of thing. You just put it in the comment section. Um, I've got a load more videos. Uh, for anybody to see. Um, so I better go now because we're going at 46 minutes, 15 seconds, something like that. <clears throat> anyway, um, this has been the throwback tag. I've been Steph Belton. Remember, save your magic. <laughs>